Today, we're taking a closer look at Providence's COVID-19 response. The capital city is one of Rhode Island's hardest hit communities when it comes to the COVID-19 pandemic. And despite being allocated additional doses of the vaccine, the city's vaccination rate is one of the lowest in the state. Joining us now live via Zoom to talk about the rollout challenges is Providence City Council President Sabina Matos. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you, Kim. I want to start with that report from my colleagues Eli Sherman and Tim White. Why is Providence lagging behind when it comes to vaccination? There are different challenges that we're facing right now. We're trying our best to reach out to the community, but you have to understand that in our community, there are a lot of individuals that, that are lacking the access to computer uh, so they can register themselves. So that also um, is playing a role. We have members of our community that are challenged for them to um, maybe don't, don't speak the language and that makes it difficult for them to be able to reach and schedule their vaccine. And another issue is the number of vaccine allocated to um, the different clinics. We have some clinics that have right now a waiting list, but they're not getting as many vaccine allocated to them. So there's a combination of re the reasons. Do you think that vaccine hesitancy plays any role here? And if so, what are you hearing from members of the community? Why might they be hesitant to get this shot? There, there is. I have heard from um, members in the community that there's, there is this, um, there's this messaging going on through social media, Facebook and, and um, other WhatsApp, in which um, there's a, a, like a chain of messages against the vaccine that unfortunately is something we have to fight um, every day. But right now, I believe we have enough individuals that are willing to take the vaccine. Unfortunately, right now, the process of getting them registered it has been challenging for many of them, as I said before, because of the lack of technology or the lack of the language. I want to shift gears just a little bit. You've submitted to be considered to be the next lieutenant governor in the McKee administration. Why do you want to take on that role? But what I would like to do is to contribute to um, the state of Rhode Island, to the city of Providence, the state of Rhode Island, and this state. I always like to talk about the things that I have been able to accomplish. Um, if you think about how I arrived here as a 20 years old without knowing the language and everything that I have been able to accomplish, these are things that only happen in a country like this country. It doesn't happen everywhere. I believe that this city, this state, and this country has given so much to me, and I just want to give back. And I believe that as a lieutenant governor, I would going to be able to help not only the city of Providence, but other communities throughout the state. Ian Donis over at Rhode Island Public Radio says you're seen as the front runner to be the next LG. So have you been interviewed yet? And if not, do you have your interview scheduled? I have not been interviewed yet. Um, um, I, don't like the term of the front runner. I think I have always liked being the underdog. I think that's the, the uh, what has worked for me in politics. Um, almost everyone always takes me for uh, under undermine my chances. So I, when that happens, they're not paying attention to what I'm to or how I'm moving forward. So, but yeah, right now I haven't been interviewed yet. Um, but I'm I'm scheduled for an interview next week next week. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you, I, I follow you on Twitter and I wanted to ask you quickly before we let you go about a tweet that you recently sent about a council person in another state who was mocked because she speaks with an accent and you thanked her for speaking out about this experience. How big of an issue is this in politics? Unfortunately, this is an issue not only in politics, but it happens in every other uh, profession. But in politics, unfortunately, it's, we, can, we have seen that. Um, me and my colleagues have experienced similar um, uh, things. It, I, always, I always remember this, um, this phrase that says, because I speak with an accent, it doesn't mean that I think with an accent. I think it is, um, we need to value the contributions that individuals make, regardless of how they speak. And also, we have to be uh, conscious that if the person had an, an accent, an European accent, probably that would not be an issue. No one would be uh, mocking that um, or thinking that it is something to laugh about. So I think we all have to be aware of our own bias that we have because we all have them and just make sure that we don't act on those bias and we keep ourselves on check. 
Providence City Council President Sabina Matos, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Kim.